Get what's going on. You already know what it is, man. This is your boy Ain't Off for the Streets. Welcome to the Ain't Off for the Streets podcast. Today we got a special guest on the podcast, a dope RB artist that's been doing his thing in the city. He's been singing at a lot of weddings. He's probably singing at your wedding. <laughs> this guy been singing on Instagram all over the place, man. Welcome, Jamal, to the podcast. Jamal, what's going on, man? How are you doing? How you doing, my brother? How you doing, man? Thank you. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. How you been, man? Yeah, I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. I'm 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 happy to have you on the show. You're the first R&B artist that we have on the podcast, you know. So I'm glad. Come on now. Yeah, yeah. You're the first. You're the first one, bro. Yeah, you're the first one. Yeah, man. So I've been I've been where I work with you in the past. We did a show. You killed the show. The you had the mm. lady screaming. You 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 got the whole. Everybody was screaming. You did your thing. So like, it's good that we we continue our our relationship and keep building. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So. So tell the people a little bit about yourself, like where are you from, like what's your background, and and really what what really got you into music and things like that. Yeah, man. Uh, my name is Jamal, formerly known as JL. Um, you know, uh, I'm a dude raised raised East Side Toronto. Yeah. Uh, you know, born in Ottawa, Canada, but my background is is, is Jamaican. Um, yeah. But as as for music, man, I've been I've been doing music ever since I was a kid, like. <laughs> You know, eight nine. Uh, wow. In 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 my hair, you know, um, sing in front of you know, uh, compete, you know, in different companies. So I was I was exposed to performing and singing in front of people at a very early age. Um, with with regards though to the whole artistry aspect of it though, I've I've always been around like different artists in the city. I've always been exposed to that. I've always loved it. Um, so I was always maintaining the skill, but you know, it wasn't until maybe like. It was, yeah, last year, late 2019, that I really started saying, okay, you know what, let me start taking it seriously and, you know, start releasing music and, and all of that stuff, so. Okay, okay. So I, so I had to... That's, go ahead. Me, though. R&B. <laughs> no, that, 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 that's me, though. Just, just R&B, soul, and, 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 and good energy and vibes, man. Okay, dope. You say you, you, you've been, like, working with a few artists and stuff like that. Were you, like, mostly, like, doing background singing? Like, who did you work with? No, nah, it's just so again, just other artists and 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 friends of mine, like Harmony Pike, for instance. You know, uh, Friday. Um, you know, well now I have you know music coming out with with, with Brooke and just different artists again. I, um, who else? Man? I feel like I'm missing other people too, but those are just different local artists, right? But um, yeah. just again, just always being um, and even just with doing um. Like, you know, um, when I was doing like, you know, private events, or whatever, like like you said, like weddings and all of that stuff, I was always around musicians, okay. right? Constantly, right? So I was forever around music. Um, I would do different events here and there where like, you know, I, I had the chance to open for Melanie Fiona at oh. one time. I had a chance to um, open for uh, Kim Davis, right? Dif- okay. Different things like that. But oh. I want to say not, not in the art- artistic capacity, it was more, I was a vocalist and I was just given these opportunities because, you know, I could sing and yeah. so forth and so on. So. Okay. Um, dope, dope, dope. That's dope. Dope. So that mean you really had like a good background in, in music and, and singing and stuff like that. So what I wanted to ask you, like mm-hmm. you're Jamaican, but what really got you into R&B? How come you never did like dance hall or reggae or anything? <laughs> no, man, I don't. No, 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 no. The dance hall thing. I, no, mind you, that's, that's part of my influence. Obviously the reggae and the dance hall, but no, no, no. Um, R&B for me was, I grew up in the nineties, right? So, and that's what a lot of people consider the golden era of, of R&B music. So, um, growing up, you know, my older brother, um, you know, my stepdad, they, 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 they played a lot of that older music. You know, this is good. This is what you call good R&B music. And he'd be singing like these dudes, like Next and Jagged Edge and okay. Usher and Jaheem and these guys, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. I always modeled it after that right and then yeah. you know um because of that that's that's just really that's where a lot of my influence came from that's why i just you know you know i i got into r&b and that's why i just kind of loved it right yeah. um and then on top of it too you know growing up in church singing in church and and, and everything you know there's a i always say if you want to find the best singers you'll just go to church bro <laughs> you'll find it you'll find the best singers period right so the discipline in music that, you know, obviously, um, you know, the training that you get just from 
doing the, the vocal training and all that stuff, or whatever. Um, you know, just for me, it was I took that instead of doing gospel music, which my mother would have loved, yeah, right? Yeah. And that's not to say, you know, I, I listen, I'll, I'll always be a church boy at heart, but you know what I mean. But um, I just, I just loved R and B. I gravitated towards, Definitely. you know, uh, sure. <laughs> I gravitated towards like, you know, Drew Hill and those guys. I'm like, yo, those guys are they're, they're nice with it. They just, you know. Max. So um and and that, I just loved it from that, man. I could tell you, I could tell you're very influenced by the 90s, because when your music is kind of like, mm. like it's stuck in the 90s, you know what I mean? And yeah, it, give, well, <laughs> it give you that, it give you that, you know, nostalgia type of vibe where you're like, oh wow, this is like, you know, make you want to mm. fall in love type shit. But that's what I feel like that's what's missing in music these days. Back then, 90s music would make you want to, like, get in a relationship, make you want to love mm-hmm. a girl down. You know what I mean? Make you buy a girl. Yeah. I was, <laughs> that's what's missing. Mm-hmm. No, no, what, no, no, 100%. Like, you know, and, and so here's the thing. We're, 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 um, so when a project comes out, too, right, uh, uh, you'll, you'll hear different sounds, right? So um, while you have songs like, you know, um, Locomotive and, and, and a lot of and the tracks that I've released before, they, they have that element because that's part of the brand, right? Um, that that you get that nostalgic type feel, right? But um, you're gonna hear music though that while it doesn't necessarily sound '90s per se, one common thing is it always has that that soul element. Whether it's you know I'm talking about you know situations with the environment that I grew up in with, or you know with the home with my dogs or whatever the case is, or or you know a personal situation of mine or whatever. Um, not everything will always sound super r&b r&b yeah, yeah. but again like i said my, my my music will always show you different things that influence me right so certain things you're going to hear okay yo that's where the west indian or the jamaican influence yeah, came yeah, from yeah, yeah. certain things yo, that's where the 90s influence came from um but yeah definitely i'm not gonna lie to you every anything from like 90 i say probably from 96 to 2007 yeah for me it was like a huge um huge influence um in my sound with regards to my sound um but yeah man i i just i i, I, I always try to carry that 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 yo he reminds me of when they used to do it back in the day yeah yeah yeah. yeah. but it sounds good today still right as yeah, long as i have that effect yeah, yeah i feel you i feel yeah you. yeah so since you're talking about the singers from back in the days and things yeah. like that, so what, what are your top top like your top five R&B singers, like, who are your top five R&B singers? It doesn't have to be Canadians. It could just be dead uh, all top five. Alive, dead or alive, the top five R&B singers. R&B artists. I know it's a hard one, right? <laughs> Yo, so I, I'm, I'm going to say, Tom, I, well, I consider, I consider Marvin Gaye R&B. Um, but yeah, Marvin Gaye. Uh, do groups count? Yo, for sure. It has to be individual. Yo, um, yeah, Joe, like Joe to see Andrew Hill. Um, Usher, of course. Okay. You know what? And I might, I might get crucified for that one still. <laughs> you know what, though? Yeah, I'm gonna say it. You know what? I would say R and B, man. Yeah. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna say Chris Brown at, at five. I wanna say Chris Brown at five. Okay, Chris. Right? Chris Brown. Chris Brown is a legend I, to me. You know what I mean? It's yeah, yeah. I, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna say, uh, yeah. I wanna say, I wanna say Chris Brown at five. See, now here's the thing, right? Yeah. There are other people in there. Oh, you know. <laughs> that clearly should be that should be mentioned in there but you know obviously so okay if we're just talking about and not to get political or anything but i'm saying we're just talking about like you know skill wise with the pen or whatever the case is you you know who has to be in there but we can't put him in there though yeah you know who has to be in there bro. Oh, okay okay i hate that <laughs> right <laughs> right so um you know they, they locked the man up so <laughs> um but yeah, yeah, it's, 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 but I'll definitely say though, those, those, those five people that I mentioned with Marvin Gaye, you know, uh, Jodeci, just because the dudes who, like, who could sing, like Drew Hill, yeah, and had it, had it dangerous, Usher again, 
and Chris Brown, man, those five, man, come on. That's a top, that's a that's a solid top five. And like I said, I, I really yeah. could, could tell like the nineties influenced you. That now that you mentioned Marvin Marvin Gaye, mm-hmm. you're very influenced by Marvin Gaye. <laughs> yeah, man, that's that and that's just a soul. That's a soul. That, that, that's that's the thing. When people say Yo, it's it's not the '90s feel that people are saying that's missing. Because if you listen to a lot of new, like Brent Fiers uses that '90s um, sound or that swag. You listen to yeah. Janae Aiko, like you know her, her. They have that that even though they might not have been you know born per se, or or they might not have really been able to take in music from that era. Yeah, because they weren't growing up in it. Yeah, but you could tell that that era influenced their music, right? So. It's not necessarily the old school. I think what people are saying is that soul, I guess, that emotion yeah, that's in the music. You're right. Yeah, that connectivity. Yeah. So yeah. That's facts. That's fact. You had a you had a solid top five. So moving forward to mm-hmm. my, my, my next questions, right? Like I feel like in Toronto, right? Toronto's really like the music industry in Toronto is, is evolving. Like Drake put the open the, the gate for the city and the eyes mm-hmm. on Canada. There have been a few R&B artists that kind of like went to the door, such as Melanie Fiona. But since mm-hmm. Melanie Fiona, there hasn't been been any. There's, uh, there's the next artist, but she kind of like mm-hmm. made pop music. I forgot her name. But besides that, as it, there's The Weeknd. From the mm-hmm. guys' size, there's, there's, there's guys that's been going like The Weeknd. There's the guys that signed to Drake. Got their name. Uh, Party Next Door. Party, division, division yeah. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I think those guys, but like, besides that, like it hasn't been a big influx of artists making it to the mainstream. So how do you feel about the, the, the R&B music in Toronto? Like, what, and I, think it's, you know? I think it's, I think it's, I think it's great. Like, you know, um, I, I think R&B in Toronto is, is, is good. We have, we have some, some dope people like, um, you know what? Which like, let me tell you something. This this Travis Knight dude that he like Travis Knight. Like Travis Knight. He's nice with it. Yeah. He's nice with it. Like he's nice with it, right? Um, and actually, I met that I met him at your your show. That same show. That's the first time I met him. Right? I've been I've been on my ears to the streets. Right. Me. So yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, but like you know you have have you have I think it's a Moel, Eternal Moel or something like that. I, I don't know if I'm Moel. I think his name's Moel. I've I've heard his music. He's he's dope at it. Like I've seen him perform live. But um, him, shoot, who else is there, man? Like there's people out here in 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 um, Zen Soul is another dope person. Um, oh. you know, and, and and some people to watch out for now. Come on now, yeah. Like you know, um, you know, yeah. I, I know I'm missing a bunch of people right now because you're you're asking me on the spot, but. Yeah, yeah there, there are people are doing the thing. I was trying to ask you, like, what do you yeah, think? Savannah Red, I think, is doing her thing, too. It's like she, she just went big, too. Like, there's, there's people in Toronto. You feel like, like, it, you feel like it's getting there, right? You feel like it's... Yeah, of course. If, if we're not there already, but we, of course, we're definitely getting there. Okay. I think it's it's more I think it's more just a structure, because here's the problem. Yeah. And, and again, you're, you, so you correct me if I'm wrong, right? The way I see it is, it, the thing is, in the states, they control them. That's where the media, like a lot of the media outlets, are they, like mm-hmm. you know, the high, big media corporations, right? So, a lot of attention goes on American artists. That doesn't mean there's a lack of talent, yeah, yeah in, in Canada that. at all. There are some dope people in 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 Canada that you come across, um, and there's times I go to shows, I see people perform, and I'm like, oh man, <laughs> you know, I, I I didn't even, you know, I didn't, even, I met them one time, performance was amazing. But they definitely left an impression, right? So I mean, there's just so much talent in in, in Canada. Yeah, you're um, right. It, it, it's wild. It's just we don't we just don't have the same infrastructure that the right. states does. So okay, that's a good answer. So infrastructure is really missing in in the city. That's one thing I I realized, right? It's not mm. it's not that much. Can you do this interview with me now? So where else do you go? You know, it's, it's like <laughs> there's not that much media outlet yeah. that does these type of things. You know what I mean? One hundred percent. For sure, that's exactly what I'm working yeah. on. I'm trying to create different, different media outlets, different, different things where I can provide artists with more value, with more ways for them to get more exposure. Because there's a lot of dope artists like you, but there's no exposure. There's no, you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. how many, how many ads, how many 
post you're gonna do your on on your Instagram. How else can you get to reach reach more people? How else can you connect with more people? You of course, know I mean? of course, like, of that's course. Why I right. do showcases and things like that because it's different things. Not one thing work. One thing I realized about mm-hmm. this music industry: not just one thing work. You can't just do one show. That's different. Mm-hmm. You gotta do a show. You gotta do an interview. Mm-hmm. You gotta do a right. Yeah. You got to do a TikTok challenge. You got to do yeah, yeah. There's so many things. You, you got to be everywhere. You got to be everywhere. Everywhere. Is, and that thing is wild. Like, it's wild now. Like, you know, you can't even. Yeah, you just got to be everywhere, man. <laughs> it's, wild. So, it's wild. When you think about it, you just it, have it, to be it, everywhere. That's it. It is wild, but that's the thing about, but the thing about the, it's the, I like the chase and the, that's what I like about the music industry is just trying to find that spot. You know what I mean? That sweet spot where you're going to take off. But not everybody has patience for, for, for this thing. You know what I mean? Everybody. So that, 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 for able, the heart. So have you been able to have patience to keep going? Because you've been doing the music thing for a minute now. So I'll mm-hmm. keep going. So, uh, yo, that's a, a great support. Uh you know, between my family, like, you know, my, my team, um, it's just great support. But I mean, for me, I'll say I go through what I went through, what, like 95, 96% of artists went through or, or go through, which is that, that moment of self doubt and, uh, you know, maybe a, a stint in, in imposter syndrome. Right. So I say that in the sense of, you know, you get into this and you sometimes realize, ah, damn, might be a little harder than I expected it to be, or damn, this is taking longer. Like the the, the benefits that I want to reap, they're taking longer yeah. to come about. Yeah. I don't know if I want to do this anymore. Like, you know, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, like, you know, or you go somewhere and you see somebody, like you go to a show and, you know, you see somebody, well, in my case, because I'm an R&B artist, you see somebody who just killed it with a with a, with a a set or whatever the case is, right? They killed killed the set and like, yo, damn, do I, do I still want to do this type of thing, right? Um, so, I mean, it, it, it was, it's, it was a, and while going through all of that, right? I was, I guess everything happens for a reason. Like you said, like as a business partner, um, you know, he, he pretty much said, yo, fam, bro, bro. You've been, like, I've been seeing you do like, you know, again, live performances here or whatever the case is. Yo, bro, you're mad talented, bro. Why aren't you doing your own music? Yeah. What, like, you know, don't you write? I'm like, yeah, I write music or whatever. I just never put it out, right? Um, and yeah, he really just got me to be like, nah, fam, no, 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 we need to stop this. We need to start, you know, doing something with it and get you consistent with it. So, um, and I think at that moment, right, um, that's when I started to really get out of that rut of, like, yo, do I want to do this or am I about to do it? Nah, I was like, nah, I, I, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to go haul ass in it, yeah. right? And and whatever comes from it, comes from it. At least I know at the end of the day, yeah, I haul in it, right? And I can, I, can, I can sit tight with that, so to speak. Okay, dope. So, so you yourself as an artist, right? Do you have a plan? Do you have a, a let's just say, okay, great, I have a, five-year plan i have a two mm. plan you know what i'm just gonna put out two albums this is the budget that i have for the two albums i'm gonna put out two albums five ten videos and i'm just gonna wait and see what happened or do you just go and freestyle your career and, and keep dropping music music like how, what's your plan okay so here's the thing in, in, in all seriousness i do have a a timed plan if you will right yeah. So I, I do have that that plan. But at the same time, though, it's not set in stone. And I, when I say that, meaning, so for example, if it's a five-year plan, right, that's not to say that I, I have a problem with, if things are successful, yeah. and now that five-year plan turns into a seven, eight-year, nine-year plan, of course. that's cool. That's yeah. cool, right? Or the five-year plan, I may be able to achieve that in three years, right? Yeah. So fun. now... Right, so there is that room for freestyle, right, or whatever. But I, I generally have about a five-year plan. Yeah, okay, Three dope. five-year plan. I would say that's dope. That's one reason why I went to ask that question because I feel like a lot of artists don't have a plan. They're just freestyling. They're just spending mm-hmm. money, and no. they're not getting anything back. But they keep going. I think they you. This is a business that you're running, right? So you don't want to be mm-hmm. running a business 
and while you're spending money and not getting any, any income back, then you become a an expensive hobby. It doesn't become a business. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, but but at the beginning though, I think you you there's that that there's that hunger period though that you gotta go through, right? Like, you know, and, and that's or the paying your dues period. So I mean at the beginning, just like with any business, right? <laughs> just like my business. Most business don't they don't start off profitable. And I yo, bro, I've been seeing you do up next for for years, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah, back. It so, is not profitable at all. I was doing free. Right? So, <laughs> but that's that's it. You you gotta you because that's that's a part of the grind, that's a part of like you know, going through and 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 really understanding it and that's how you figure out if you're really about it right because again if you're passionate about something you'll do it for free but event that passion to start producing like, you know so um again facts that's a good answer for me for me that's 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 the aim i'm aiming towards of course that's a great answer that's but the thing is of course this is i just believe yeah that's a great answer yeah right? that, that's, yeah it has to be that. In, in the beginning when i was doing this I was doing free shows, free mixtapes, free parties. Everything was mostly for free. I was really barely making any income, you know what I mean? But I was just building my name, building the foundation, building the trust with people, yeah. relationships. And over time, when I, I'm able to be like, okay, I built enough relationships. I built it, done enough free stuff. Now I'm able to be like, okay, this is how much I charge for the services. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. like it, it, well, I give mm -hmm. myself. A, a time period that we like, you know what? I'm not trying to do this for like two, three years. After the two, three years, I grind, I grind, I grind. I, I got enough recognition. And within the next two years, okay, I was like, okay, I got enough recognition. People know who I am. People trust what I do. Now people are willing to pay me for what I do. You know what I mean? <laughs> Facts. Mm -hmm. So you definitely. Yeah, man. And, and, that, and that's beautiful. That, yeah, man. That, that's what it's about. <laughs> you definitely, you definitely, that's definitely what it's about. Yeah, so that's why I wanted to ask you what, what are your plan? Because it's like you gotta have a plan when it comes to the music business, right? Because at at one point, at a mm -hmm. point, you you spend so much money and you watching other people because you're watching this, you're watching this, and you're not seeing anything coming back on your end, right? And you start getting yeah. so yeah, yeah, you know, you're getting discouraged on your journey, you know? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. What? Yes. Well, no, no, no. I was gonna say no. You're one hundred. 100% you're right but you know as an artist <laughs> you know people think it's the artist that gets paid the most huh no nah. it's not like if, if you want to they, they get the most celebrity they get the fame everybody knows their face but like yo if you want to make money in the music business you know you don't you don't you don't necessarily go to become an artist you know there, there are there are other ways there are definitely other ways to go about um, um making that money you know yeah, definitely. Like one thing I do realize in the music business, that's why I kind of like I, I had this interview with this uh, grant writer, right? And he was telling me about mm -hmm. all these grants. That's the reason one of the reason why I started my music fund, GoFundMe, right? Because he was telling me about all these grants. I'm like, artists mm -hmm. apply for grants, but the money doesn't go to the artist. The grant goes to what the artist is gonna pay for, like a director, like the recording studio, like. Yeah. <laughs> Like, when does the yep. artist get paid? Does the yep. artist get any money on these grants? He's like, uh, no. I'm like, what? It makes no sense. How artists are applying for grants yeah. to pay other people? When do they get paid? When do they get to get yeah. that money for themselves? You know what no, I mean? No, you're not. And that's the thing. You, yeah, you're not lying. You're not lying. It's, it's, it's messed up, right? Because again, being an artist, you know, it's expensive. It think is. about it. You think about it. You you record a song as an artist, for example, right? And you know you have the producer there right off the bat if it's just you and the producer okay you know you have your industry standard your 50 50 split probably right that you're going to do your 50 50 split so now you as an artist you have 50 percent to work with 50 percent already gone right you have 50 percent to work with and now if you have other writers on the song they got to get a piece of their publishing right <laughs> um, you know like you know i remember and you know oh, they're, they're man's they're man's who are, They'll just be in the room, you know, they'll be in the room and they'll be like, yo, yo fam, instead of saying duh, you, you should say duh instead of the, right? 2% publishing. <laughs> so, um, and then from that, remember, you got to pay your manager too and all of, like, as an artist. So it's, it's that's what I'm saying as a, as a, as you have to understand that if you're going in as an artist, you know, and look at any great artist, any great artist. I'll use Michael Jackson, for example, right? He was in well obviously he was in it from the man was pretty much birth but 
like, you know, as he grew up into the icon that we know as Michael, right? His money, his empire, that, that was coming from other business deals, Pepsi and, and this company and publishing out the ass, right? Um, to the point where he was just getting ganks and just buying people's publishing, just because, yeah. right? So, um, but again, though, that's, that's, that's where the money comes from, right? Really? The publishing, the backend stuff, who owns the masters, right? What's the master? Um, all, yeah. all, all, all of that stuff. So, like, you know, but you being on stage, singing in front of 70,000 people, of course, everybody's going to know your name. But there are a lot of celebrities, a lot of great artists who were broke. Everybody knew the name, but they were broke. <laughs> I feel like when it comes to being an artist, the, the, the biggest thing about being an artist is, is the image, the brand. Because once you mm -hmm. once you get to a status where everybody know you, then you'll be able to sell your image, your likeness for other things, such as commercials, such as endorsement deals. And I feel like that's where most of the money comes in for artists. And when artists get to a plat, uh, 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 the level, then they could use some of that money to do more investments for themselves and creating their own business, such as Drake. If Drake was signed to, to cash money, uh, signed, which, which is signed to Universal. So a lot of, mm -hmm. just, then he, he was signed to Young Money, Cash Money, Universal. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people got to take money out of his, his pot. You know what I mean? But what he mm -hmm. did, he created his own empire. October's yeah. very own. He got October's very own record label. He got October's very own merch. He got everything, bro. You know, yeah, man. That's that's why he was. He did a whole bunch. That's why Drake. Every time he drop an album, he does a tour. So that's why he get a lot of money from his touring. You know, because he didn't own his masters, but the touring bought a lot of money for him. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's why he was able to kind of like bring up so much money in his pocket because he did a lot of. That's why every year he was touring. He was doing tours everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, that, and that's the thing that people, people, people don't, they don't see that. They, they think like, yeah, you know, Drake, yeah, you know, it's this is that. No, Drake is haul assing, bro. Haul assing <laughs> to get to where he is now. <laughs> he's he's so, ass so, off, bro. This guy was yeah, so you, all over the world, everywhere. Haul assing. So you see when Drake gets on his, 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 his moments, his mode sometimes, yeah. right? It's like, yo, louder, man, because low key. If it was me and I went to, I probably do the same thing. <laughs> they do, right? <laughs> it's like, yo, just, just, sometimes you just gotta be real to yourself and say, yo, honestly, go on, do your thing, still, fam. Um, but yeah, man, uh, it's it's definitely one of those things. You gotta, you gotta. Music is normally that catalyst. Like I remember Buster Rhymes was watching an interview. He's saying, I feel it was Buster Rhymes. He's saying like, you know, when he meets with his accountant every year, he meets with his his accountant, and under music. It's always a negative, right? Wow. It's always a negative. But because of music, though, that creates more opportunities for him to make money elsewhere, yeah. right? So, again, it's, it's an investment in itself. People need music. Music is in everything we do, everything, right? Everything. Everything, everything yeah. right? So, I mean, you use music as a catalyst or as a vehicle to stay relevant, to keep, That's you know, to keep yeah. people yeah. talking. Yeah, yeah, I know this guy. Yeah, yeah. So now, when your face is attached to some cologne, yeah, right. Yeah, they did. And as as bad as it sounds, but when your face is attached to some cheap cologne, you'd be surprised how many people buy that cheap cologne, right? Um, do you right? Look at Jay Z. Jay Z has Ace of Spades. He bought Ace mm -hmm. of Spades, but the only reason why Ace of Spades was so popular because it was attached to Jay Z, and it was he he made it like a luxury brand because. Yeah. I was reading. It only cost thirteen dollars to make Ace of Spades, but he was selling it in the liquor stores for two hundred dollars. But in in the club, it's a thousand. Club, like four. Yeah, it's wild, bro. <laughs> like it's wild. And then, and then when you have the mans down, like you know, you, it's funny because when you watch the dynamics in, in in clubs, yo, right? Like you have one group of the man, them like you know, they they buy a bottle, and you know the the girls come with the, the fireworks and everything or whatever. Um. So then the next one, I think, now what? Now I gotta buy a buckle, yo. And I'm watching yo Ace of Spades come left, right, and center, bro. Dollars each, just one shot, boom. I'm like, yo, this is wild, bro. And the fact that you're telling me it costs thirteen dollars <laughs> to make that, <laughs> and yep. you sell it for two hundred, <laughs> that's wild. That's wild, that's wild man. Club is selling for thousand dollars. These guys who spend ten thousands of that worth of dollars in the club um, on bottles. That's you know what I mean? wild, man. Well, yeah, that's 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 a that's uh, a crazy thing. But like, that's fine. That's, damn, that's not even matter. That. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but that's the that's why a lot of people get into the liquor business. Drake, 
trying to get in the liquor business himself. A lot of people are topping into that market. You know what I yeah. mean? You yourself as an artist on the come up, right? I would say since you're making R and B music, you tap, you make a lot of love love music. You gotta tap in and see what kind of products your fan base will will like. So let's just say every time you drop a single, if you don't drop a merch with it, you might drop a product with it. You might be like, okay, the next single I'm dropping is this. You know, I'm gonna drop a candle line with it. You know, this is a candle. This is candle for the ladies. So every time they buy the candle, they get the album. They get they get the single with it. You know, so you could come up with different tactics. Mm-hmm. If it's candle or a, a, a flower line or a, you know what I mean? It could be different things that you attach to your music that you feel like people are going to want to mm-hmm. support you with. Because, like, yeah. merch, merch is cool. Merch is cool. People are going to buy merch. You could do the merch for the ladies or th- things like that. You could be, do, even look into doing a lingerie line or something like, whatever it may be, you feel like your support is going to buy, you got to attach it to the music. And I feel like that's how you're going to be able to make a lot of income back that you put in, you know? So that, I did, I, I test that with one of mm-hmm. when, when you drop the single, I attach a, sh- a shirt to the single. Like I attach some merch, like t-shirt, hoodies, hats. Mm-hmm. You know, this guy was able to sell over a thousand dollars for merch with that single. So I was able to get all my money back off that single that I spent with him. You know what I mean? Because since, mm-hmm. people, don't buy, since people don't buy music as much, people would rather go stream it, but you yeah. got to attach something to the music, something tangible that people could buy so people could have to themselves and you'd be able to make a lot more income with it. It just some it just you just have to think about it. You just have to go to the drawing board and write down, you know what? These are the people I make music for 18 mm-hmm. to 18 to 30. Uh okay, great. Where do they shop at? Oh, they shop at Sephora. Oh, what kind of what kind of, oh this they like this, they like this. All right, you know what? I'm about to make some crop tops. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> It was shit. You just really gotta like you you really have to you really have to like tap into your data, look into your one hundred percent. That's the way you do it, man. That's the way you do it. And over time, while you're building and you keep getting all these emails, all these data when you do giveaways, because mm-hmm. what you do first, right? You do a giveaway. Let's just say, okay, great. You you had a campaign to do some next marketing. You take that money and do a giveaway instead. You might do like a Walmart gift card, uh a Sephora gift card, you know what I mean? You just have to really mm-hmm. tap into what your fan base are, to who you're making music for, and actually tap, because once you start collecting emails and their phone numbers, then you'll be able to kind of be like, okay, this is the amount of people that I have, I got from this giveaway, all right, I'm about to sell them some candles, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I hear you, I hear you, I hear you, 100%, bro, I hear you, 100%. Definitely. Absolutely right, no, man. Cause the streaming, you know, the streaming income is cool and all, but it takes time to 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 see any income come back from the stream. Yeah. You might look at your yeah. tune for it. Damn, thirty cents. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it, no, and you're not you're not lying. So, and that's what I'm saying. You got to create those other those other avenues of, of of income, right? Yeah. But let but like you said, the music is a, it's a catalyst. It's a, it's a vehicle, it's right? A vehicle. And through that, like you I said, said Walmart merch. Yeah, or your music is a Walmart. The, your music there, there you go. That, there you go. <laughs> there you go, right? So, um, Amazon, so, you right? know, wh- while you're here for the music, go ahead and buy yourself a t-shirt, get yourself a hat, and get yourself a mask, too, right? Um, you definitely, you definitely do, man, but, like, one thing I realized, you really have to be, you really have to be creative. You really have to know where your fan base is, because you don't want to put out a, 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 you know, you don't want to put out something that your people is not going to buy, you know? Because, like, oh, let me just put out, because I like it. Nah, they don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> You feel me? No, no, 100 percent, Like I said, you know, it, and, and those are things that will that, that will come with time. Like, you know, I have some ideas when it comes to, you know, what I'd want to do with regards to, um, you know, other business ideas or ventures down the road. Yeah, um, they come in time for sure. You know, what, what, yeah. Well, one thing though is that that's crucial for me right now is just more solidifying my identity um, musically, right? So, like, even with the music again. As the music comes out, right? Um, for example, you see how you have the you, you made the perception, right? Which which I'm fine with it. I, I I don't have a problem with it. The perception may be like you know I only do like you know old school sounding or lover you know lover type R and B music or whatever, yeah. right? Which is which is fine because that's what I've put out so far intentionally. But yeah. I mean, um, 
Nah, like with, 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 with the projects and everything, with music yeah. that comes out, you're going to get different. Yeah, you're going to get different styles. Okay. Right? Okay. We're still, yeah, it's Jamal. Yeah, this is Jamal's sound, but like, nah, I'm not talking about the same sound. You know, and there's a time, there's a time to say, okay, yo, come here, type of thing. Like, you know, there's a, there's a time to, you know, do a step to, to you know, you say, tempo type thing, you know, so. That's dope, 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 dope. So, um, trying to, for all those times and space work, a time and space, and. Uh, hmm? Dope, dope, dope. Nah, your, 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 your video is kind of like chip, chippy a little bit, but it's pretty good now. So, so what I wanted to ask you, like, what, so what type of music do you, you feel like you make? What, what, what is your sound and like, what is your sound? Because I feel like you, you're trying to find yeah. your sound. Uh, yeah, I, w- I would say, well, I mean, the, the, the sound is, is, is always, um, if you're creative, I think you're forever improving on your sound right um i i would say i've i've, I've found my sound i i know what my sound is um yeah. you know it's 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 and again as i produce more music as i or as i come out release more music i should say yeah um the the, the sound will get clearer and clearer right okay. um but i i always say if somebody asks me about my sound i say it's a, it's a type of energy i'm not necessarily going for a sound i'm going for a type of energy right a type of feel okay. right um a connectivity, if you will. So when you listen, it, it speaks to you, regardless of what I'm talking okay. okay, about. Okay, about it. Like, yo, this, yo, this dude, yo, this dude, yeah. <laughs> okay, dope, dope, dope. So what, what what has been your biggest accomplishment as an artist that, so far, so like, that you're proud of? I mean, dude, like, I, I'm I'm just starting in this, and, you know, I could say, like, you know, I've, I've at least had two songs to touch radio, you know? Okay, dope. Um, Oh. So, so for me, that's, that's, that's saying something, you know, um, uh, one thing I'm learning to do is, is cause I, I, I see things very big, like, big, um, you know, visions or dreams, if you will. Um, and that's with anything I do inside or outside of music. But, you know, one thing I'm really trying to work on is appreciating the, the, the small victories, right? Yeah, the sure. cause progress is progress regardless. So, um, yeah, I'd say like, you know, I haven't come up with a project or anything, and then, you know, I could say I've, I've had two songs play, um, you know, on, on on multiple radio stations. So it's it's that's that's a good thing. That's that's a good thing. One one hundred percent, you know. Dope, dope, dope. And also, I seen that you released. You just released a song called "Locomotive," right? Yeah. So yeah, like, tell tell me a little bit more about that release. What is it? What is that song about? Like, what message you're trying to put out with that song? Yeah, so that, that message is, is, is very simple, right? So <laughs> I, even though I just finished saying that, all my music doesn't sound like this, but whatever. <laughs> um, this this uh, was a track that I released on uh, Valentine's Day, um, Locomotive, produced by Alvin Rise, um, with some co-production by uh, Stretch. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, that, that song is, is, is very simple. It's about love, sensuality, communication, simply. It's a track that... Um, uh, when I was writing it, so one one song or one of the influences, one of my influences artistically is um, Miguel, right? Yeah. Um, and, and and Miguel had written a song adoring. So that song, I the song so the yo, yo, oh, yo, that song is, he's gonna make money off of that song forever, right? <laughs> but anyway, um, but yeah, the 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 when I was writing it, right? Um, my boy, uh, my business partner told me like, yo fam, you should, you should write a song called Locomotive. He gave me a completely different idea, yeah. but I said, Locomotive, I kind of like that still. And then I heard the beat um, from Alvin. I was like, yo, this, this, is, this is hard. Like the baseline, the baseline and everything. I'm like, yo, this beat is hard, like, you know? Um, and yeah, man, I just, I just, yeah, I just started writing it. And okay. while I was writing it, I was saying like, yo, if this song were to play on radio, right? What song would you play before it? Right? I, I would I would hope a door, right? Either before or after, right? And I was like, that was me kind of trying to write my own version of a door with that same type of energy, that same type okay. of soul feel, right? So yeah. okay, so do you write your own music? Like like I do, write, yeah. Like most of your music. 
Yeah. yeah. You don't get in, you don't do any collaborations with other writers? No, no, I I do, I do collaboration. So that's like music that I have coming out will have um collaborations with 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 other um okay. writers um, okay. or other artists. But but no, I write I write a lot of my music. Um, you know, um, yeah. <laughs> so you'll you'll yeah. But I I definitely have no problem collaborating. So it's, uh, I don't have a problem. Okay, so who, who would you like? Who would you most like to collaborate with then? In the city or even in the states right now? Who would you want you to collaborate mean? with? Like art, artist wise, who would you want to put out a song with? <laughs> Shoot, tough one, huh? I'm asking that question right now. <laughs> uh. Um, yo, I damn. Let's do a track with 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 with, with Miguel. I'll okay. do one with the weekend too, you know. Okay. Like, okay. Especially with the sound now, like you know, his his sound, like the whole after hour sound. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. This is just I see. There's not just one person. There's like the weekend. Um, you know, probably next door. I definitely want to do that. I would definitely. Do a track with still. Um, Miguel, Usher, yeah. her, Jasmine Sullivan, man, there's this, there's, there's, yeah. That's a lot. There's, of, like a, there's a lot of people, man, because there's just a lot of great people. A lot of, a lot of people. That, but, um, it's been a lot for sure, for sure. Yeah, you can't ask me just one. That's not even fair. So I, I can't tell you <laughs> just one, to be honest. Like, <laughs> now you could just tell me a couple. I'm glad you gave me a couple. So I appreciate that. Yeah. But yeah, so I'm not gonna hold you on for too long. I got a, I got a couple more questions for you before I let yeah, you go, man. right? So I, I wanted to ask you, right? Uh, mm -hmm. What I wanted to ask you is, let me just give, like, what are some of the accomplishments you like you aiming for the future, like in the near future? What are some of the accomplishments I like? Yeah, do you want to accomplish for sure? Like goals you have? I, def I definitely, I definitely, I definitely want to break um into the American music scene. Okay. Um, uh, you know. Starting, you know, I, yeah. Let's. I just want to break into the American scene, and and for the most part, you know what my my accomplishment. I just want to be able to look back at twenty twenty, for instance. Yeah. And say, okay, twenty twenty one. I was here at twenty twenty and twenty twenty one. I have uh. I've I've made progress thus far, okay. right? Yeah. And I I just I, my whole thing is just consistently. I just want progress, consistent right. progress. Yeah. Yeah. Um, exponential progress too. Not, not. If I got, if I got, you know, fifteen, fifteen dollars off of music this year, I want sixteen. No, no, no. I did fifteen dollars this year. I need at least a twenty-five dollars this year. You feel me? <laughs> right. So, um, just, just decent, decent growth where it can show me. Okay, fine. You're not where you want to get to yet, but keep going because you're moving in the right direction. So, um, you, you are. You definitely are for sure. But I definitely want to say to you, like, as you grow, you know, you should definitely like, look into getting your website done. You know what I mean? Getting your website done and 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 wait. You, so your website would be your Facebook, your Instagram, your TikTok, uh -huh. where most of your stuff will be. And it's just a way where people could go and find every information. They just say, I just put this video on YouTube. You'll be able to put it on your website where people go check out for it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So you need to own lower hub where people could go check your stuff. Cause as you grow, you know, okay, great people are subscribing to my emails. Cause it could be your journal. Cause as an artist, you have mental blocks. You have things that you go to and mm -hmm. your website, you could do a lot of blog, a lot of blogging, you know what I mean? So you can mm -hmm. get people into your journey. Not everybody want to do it, but I feel like having your website would be something that's like along the journey. You could see your progress. You can see how many people subscribe. You people, you could see how many people visit it. You can see how many people checking for your stuff. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's good to keep track of all these things. And that's one thing I realized what I did as well. I created a website. Now I can see how big my website is going, how many people are subscribing, how many people are buying these merch things that I have, how many people listen to the music, the mixtapes that I put out and things mm -hmm. like that. So the website will definitely help you keep track of everything, keep track of your progress. Cause you don't want to rely on somebody else's platform to see how you're doing. You don't rely on Spotify oh, streams. It's good. It's there. You don't mm -hmm. rely on app mm -hmm. on YouTube. It's good. All these things are good, but you need to have your own platform. You need to have your own stuff where you can 
keep track of your journey, keep track of who's checking for you, how many people are subscribing to your email list. We need your own stuff. You know what I mean? So that's, mm-hmm. the, that's mm-hmm. one advice I would like to give you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. To into. So another no, no. I want to ask you, uh, mm-hmm. what is the best advice you've been given thus far? The best advice I've been given? Uh, <laughs> um... That a that a song wasn't good. Oh, so was it good? That you feel like the best. Yeah, that a that a song wasn't good, and the reason why I see that is it was because I was told the song wasn't good, but that was my first song to ever go on radio, right? So, yeah, okay. um, but but the reason why I say that though is because the lesson that it taught me is um before if that you know, and again I love it. I I me personally I I I love it. You know what I mean um yeah. just because uh before what it taught me. Is before that happened, I'm like, yo, screw this, yo, I'm done, yo. I, I don't want to do this, <laughs> I can't, <laughs> right? Um, as opposed to whereas now it's like, okay, I I believe in my art, like you know what I mean, and and I feel it's as and that's where you know as an artist you get to a point where it's like, you know, you believe in your art, you believe in your your skill set, um, and and while there's of course I feel there's room for me to improve, of course, but I I feel that no, nah, I'm, I'm I'm good at this and I can yeah. do this. You know what I mean? So, um, but yeah, just with me going through that and realizing that nah, I'm not reacting the same way. I'm actually saying, yeah, cool. I'm going to show you that it's actually a good song, right? And then, oh. you know, oh, oh. so I mean, but again, it's, it's, it's all it's all stepping stones. It's all, you know, it's all learning in the process um, for me personally. And um, yeah, man, I just, I love it. Like, you know, it just it just shows me because at the end of the day, this you and I both know this industry is not for the faint of heart. It's not no Nah, it's not, man. It, it's not. So <laughs> I didn't have like Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you gotta love it to keep doing this. You know what I mean? It's oh, not, of course. It has to be a passion for you. Because people that get it for the money don't last, you know? Yeah. So you gotta have passion, be passionate about this. You gotta love it, you know? Yeah, man. Actually, you know what? And that brings it back to another question. You actually, I think you asked me what was my goal. Yeah. Right. I would say like definitely within the next few years is for sure not to I want this to be my only where I, I don't have to be an artist, a part time artist. I want to be able to do it full time. Done. OK. Dope. Right. Dope. So is that actually as you're saying that it, it kind of just sparked yeah, that in my head. Dope, dope, dope. That dope. No, that's dope. That's that's a dope goal to have for sure. For sure. Okay, great. A lot for my last few questions. What I wanted to ask you, right? If you could change anything about the the music industry uh, in Canada, like what would it be? Like anything you would like to change? And put, my, put my money to it. Put my money. Just put my money into the. Put my money into the. Um, just music, right? Whether it's from an educational standpoint with the with the arts, right? Um, we should have more um programs like remix right remix should not be the one of its kind that should not be unique right um it should be one of many um definitely you know i mean the states put so much money into now nah, i don't know how the grant system works down there and everything like I don't that think but they I mean, have grants <laughs> huh, huh? okay they don't have grants right so but i mean just again with us and how our whole thing is about social development and socialist society at least yeah. I mean, you know, we, we should be, I think we could, we could do a little better. That's all I'm saying. Right. Definitely. Um, and that goes, that, that goes to everything from like, you know, corporate wise within the music industry, the Canadian music industry, yeah. um, right down to how it's treated within our education system. Right. Just put some more respect on the music is what I'm saying. Yeah, and by doing that, it means just. Yeah, just put some more money in. Put a little bit more money, man. Put a little bit more money, man. We need some money, man. That's it. That's it. That's it. Interview. We need some money, man. Because you need money to make things happen. That's why I be trying to tell people, man. You need money to make things happen. Because things will just happen. Because like one hundred percent. Yeah, you just mean just getting these billboards. You need money, man. These people don't care if you don't have money. If you don't got money. I'm sorry. You come back to us when you have money. You yeah. Know, I, I, you play. <laughs> Yeah, like you know, it's it's funny too because you always you always hear that, right? Like you know, oh yo, this this artist, yo, I don't think they're that nice, still, yo, I don't think they're that nice, yo. How do you get in video plays here and you know, hundred thousand videos and 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 
<laughs> Billboard's here. Yo, at the end of the day, you know what it is? They said, yo, screw it. I, I put the money behind the marketing, right? Because at the end of the day, that's what marketing is supposed to do. Yeah, right? It's supposed to put you in as front of as, as many as eyes many as possible. possible. Right? At least good marketing, anyway. It's supposed to put you in front of as many people as possible, yeah. right? In hopes that if they put you in front of a million, hopefully 500,000 of those people will be like, you know what? I like that. Let me, yeah. let me, let me, let me, let me come back and, you know, and deal with that. So, I mean, and, and those are the people, the people that are getting, it's because they're doing the marketing, the people that are getting out to radio, it's because they've been grinding, they put out song after song after song after song, and one of them has to bust eventually, right? So, um, right it's that. just a consistent, it's a consistency and the energy you put behind it straight up, man, right? Yeah. And, 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 you know, yeah, like you have to remember your favorite artist, remember they have a big, Drake, trust me, there's somebody, it might not come out of Drake's pocket maybe, but somewhere, somehow, <laughs> Paying for all Drake's that. marketing, they're paying some. They're paying for. They're paying somebody, right? Yeah, they're paying somebody. These court. You definitely right. So, about that. Like these billboards aren't. Yeah, these billboards aren't saying we're putting Drake's face up here for free. Nah, you want this out up here? You got to pay us some money for that. Eight thousand dollars plus. Yeah, you read right about that. So I wanted to ask you again, uh, my two questions. What's next for you? What you what's coming up? Do you have an album coming out? Do you plan on? Doing yeah. It? Okay, go ahead. Let us know. Did that. That's it. I'm I'm in project mode right now, to be honest, right? So just releasing music up up until that. Um, you know, there will be more music coming out before the project. So when is um, the project, project dropping? Summer, summer, summer is, is the date. We don't have a definite date yet. You know, follow me on Instagram. Yeah. Um or all Twitter, uh TikTok is all the same drum all music. Yeah. Um and we'll have more information to that. We just don't have a definite date, but the project's almost done. And that's it, man. Just just grinding, just you know, staying low key, creating. Um, but you know, the, the the good thing is because I get messages all the time. People tell me, "Yo, fam, yo, I see you doing your thing, bro. I like it. Keep, keep." You know, so yeah. the energy has been good. The part, the you know, the love has been there. So um, that's it, man. Just keep doing it, and, and when this project comes out, hope y'all are rocking with it, man. Because. In my opinion, some good damn music. <laughs> facts, facts, facts. Yeah, you've been putting, you put out a dope single, so I can only assume that the whole project gonna be crazy. So, what's your message yeah. to your supporters? I don't like calling them fans. I like calling them supporters. Mm-hmm. So what's your message? One hundred percent. My message to supporters is: Hold on one second, because literally my phone is about to die on me, like right now, fam. Yeah. So I just gotta shift this over here a bit. Wait, one sec. Sorry. Yeah, my lighting changed a bit, but um, now nah, the message, my message to uh, my supporters again is, is again, I thank y'all. Lord knows, I thank y'all um for all the support, all the love, um, all the energy. Again, um, for people who have known me, I've dabbled in and out of this whole music thing, doing it one day and not doing it the next day for a while. So, like you know, um, again, I'm here, man. I'm just doing the music, share the music, spread the music. If you vibe with it. By all means, man. Just like I always say, it's just good R&B music, man, in many different forms. Dope, dope. Just you just gotta like keep dropping these singles, keep people engaging. You know, dropping an album is cool, but I feel like dropping singles, dropping consistent singles, keep people Mm. keep people coming back. Because you could drop an album, people listen to the album, then they're done. So what's next? Then I mean, you have to drop a next album, drop a next album. Yeah, Yeah, you got, you got, you got, you definitely you got to drop the singles, but. the, the album though is is the album is what 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 kind of makes you like that perceived as that, like the serious artist yeah, right yeah. like you yeah. know it's it's different from an artist who just has a load of singles yeah versus an artist that has serious you know a project or an album right oh. so at least once the album's out yeah trust me I'm gonna come out with singles too right <laughs> but um you need that you need that body of work you need that that album right because yeah. remember there are people there are the fans though there are the listeners who actually just if they vibe with you as an artist, they want to hear like an album, just yeah. a bunch of music from you, one shot, one time, right? Yeah, you definitely. That's it, so. Yeah. So look, my last question for you before I let you go is, uh, what advice would you like to share with your supporters on how to keep going and staying positive? Because right now we're going to COVID, we're going to all kinds of uh, mm-hmm. all the mental health issues right now. People not knowing how to stay positive. Like you said, you're about energy. So how, what advice would you like mm-hmm. would you tell people to keep to, to keep going and staying positive? Uh, definitely, I would say um, hmm. 
it's very easy for us to focus on all the negatives that are going on right now. Um, but I mean, like, it's, it's, it's trying to find the sense of purpose throughout all of this. What is it that you can improve on? So, you know, one thing for me, which um, I'll say, I'm not going to lie to you, I think in a sense, since the pandemic started, it, it's helped me to really just focus with regards to, to music, right? And be more consistent with just hunkering down type of thing and just writing, writing, recording, because I don't, there's nothing else out there to distract me or anything, right? Yeah. Just really focus and hone in on, on what it is I want to do. So I know people have probably heard it, but I mean, if there's something that you want to do that you never had the chance to do, right? Um, do it. Like this is this is the this is the time now to try and grow in other areas. Same right? Thing about that. That's um, what you're right. Right. And, and and really just take the time to just you know focus on yourself and really discover yourself in a sense, right? Um, because when this is done, I I would I would hope that you know people don't come out the same way, right? This the same thinking that we have, it should change, right? In in so many ways and in, in shapes and forms, like it, it should change. So and one thing that should be there is that don't take things for granted because clearly we were taking a lot of things for granted, a lot of, you know, um, everyday things that we just took as an everyday, you know, right yeah. in a sense. Yeah. Hey, take it from you and now it's not a joke. You can't even go to the theater like you used to before, right? You can't even walk into a mall and go buy a pan. Yeah. You know? It just shows you. You're right. You're right about that. That was some great advice. So let the people know where they could find you, like your Instagram, your YouTube, your Spotify, and all these things so they could connect with mm -hmm. you. Yeah, so um, Spotify, everything is the same. Well, Spotify is just Jermall, J-E-R-M-A-L. Apple Music is the same thing. Yeah. Title, all of those, I'm all there. But um, if you go to, if you follow me on Instagram, I have a link directly there to all of that stuff, at Jermall Music, J-E-R-M-A-L. Yeah. Uh, music, all one word. Twitter is the same thing. Jamal Music. TikTok is the same thing. Okay. Um, Jamal Music. Um, if you go on YouTube and just look up Jamal, um, it should come up there as well, right? Um, but yeah, man, all, all those platforms in there. Okay, dope, dope, dope. Yo, I really appreciate you coming on the In Off for the Streets podcast. I'm glad we were able to connect once again. Like I tell people, it's about all about building good relationships because you never know where I'm gonna be at next year. I might be the 100. The A at, <laughs> at this label. Come on, come me. on, come on. Speak it. Speak <laughs> so it. I, yo, I speak everything into existence and go get it. You know what I mean? So I, I appreciate you coming on there. So everybody that's watching, make sure you guys check out his Spotify. He just drop a new single called Locomotive. Check it out. He got a couple songs in there. Follow him on, on Instagram. And also follow us on Instagram as well at UpNextUPN6XC. Thank you very much for tuning in to the Ain't Off of the Streets podcast. This was Jermall, an R&B artist from Toronto. So make sure you guys check him out. Holla at your boy. I'm out.